Silent Hill games are very different than most games in the survival horror genre. Instead of focusing on shock moments and gore, they use psychological terror in a sort of lucid dream atmosphere. The suspense and creepiness is built gradually, until by the last act of the game, you're practically ready to jump at the slightest strange noise. This is mainly due to the stellar soundtrack work of Akira Yamaoka, which moves effortlessly from peaceful ambient music to nasty industrial noise, and even a soulful rock tune or two. Silent Hill 2 is considered the best in the series by many critics and fans, and I agree. Though much of what makes it special is the story and presentation rather than gameplay. The story starts with a simple premise. James Sunderland lost his wife three years ago to an unnamed disease, and one day he receives a letter from her claiming to be in Silent Hill waiting for him. Now in a B-movie this sort of setup would lead to a straightforward ghost story, but Silent Hill 2 doesn't take the easy way out. Instead of spooks, James finds disturbingly humanoid creatures without faces, and other people who are also looking for something in the town. Silent Hill, like the Twilight Zone, is a place where reality shifts, and familiar places turn either into hollow shells devoid of life, or more hellish versions yet, with rusted metal and hooks everywhere. If some of this sounds like Jacob's Ladder, it's because that film is a primary influence on the Silent Hill series. In keeping with the Jacob's Ladder influences, Silent Hill 2 also constantly questions whether what James is experiencing is real or not. James meets a woman named Maria in Silent Hill who looks just like his dead wife, except she dresses and acts very differently. He also meets a young man who may or may not be a murderer. He meets a woman searching for her father and brother, but who may not be revealing everything. He meets Laura, a little girl who doesn't seem to be able to see the monsters in Silent Hill. Then there are the little reminders of Mary that keep popping up everywhere. And then there's Pyramid Head, the silent executioner. You've probably seen pictures of Pyramid Head elsewhere, but let's just say he plays a crucial role in this game. All of this builds to a final act that contains some of the most profound writing in video games, That's not including a truly surprising plot twist and a final confrontation that is both cathartic and deeply moving. This is not to say Silent Hill 2 is perfect. The controls are awkward, especially the combat controls. The dialogue occasionally suffers from a lack of nuance, and there's some backtracking that can get kind of tedious. But if you can deal with all that, you'll be treated to smart, me. creepy video game storytelling at its finest. A side note about the endings. The best ending is called Leave, and the other endings are interesting in their own way, but not nearly as satisfying. On all editions of Silent Hill 2, except for the original PlayStation 2 version, there's also an excellent side quest game called Born From A Wish where you play as Maria, just before James enters Silent Hill. It's not necessary to get full enjoyment from the game, but it's still worth checking out for another perspective on the world of Silent Hill 2. Somebody 